here at the El Paso Country Club. I've been a member here for a long time. I love this place, but like every business, it was hit with a tsunami of problems once COVID-19 hit. Joining me now is Andy Katami. He is the general manager and CEO of El Paso Country Club. Andy, nice to see you on this day. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be with you. Okay, now Country Club members, of course, in the beginning, I think everybody was just stunned, so it was probably pretty quiet, but then when did the complaints start? When am I going to get to golf? When am I going to get to eat in the restaurant? What? Absolutely. What it was about middle of March when basically that tsunami hit us, just like anybody else. Um, there was a lot of unknowns uh, of what's happening, what's the future for the club, what are the services, what's going to happen and all that. And we were all obviously in the same boat. We did not know what's going to come up. So slowly, slowly the gym got closed, the daycare and the spa got closed, and then the golf course got closed, the tennis course. So basically the facility just went to idle. And the only thing we were allowed to do was the uh, catering uh, for um, pickup orders, and the restaurant was only allowed to operate as a to-go place for, for the members. Now, how did you comply with the law and keep your members happy and keep people from going, okay, I'm out of here? It was, a very, it was a very difficult task. It was a very difficult time for the first, uh, right about middle of March to about end of April was a very tough time for us. Um, I was in direct communication with my membership via email, phone calls, messages, keeping them all together, telling them that slowly things will get better. We had a lot of news that, you know, eventually the state of Texas will be opening, going through the phases and all of that. Um, a lot of concern on the membership side, but I think El Paso Country Club overall is such a special place for its members and for its staff. Um, I'm proud to say that we did not have one unemployment case at El Paso Country Club. We kept everyone on the payroll. Membership was extremely pleased that we are having a bright future coming back and open up, and uh, they stayed on board with us, and we were very fortunate to have that. What phase are we in, and where does everything stand right now? We are on phase two, and at the moment, the restaurant, as of today, is at 75% capacity, and the table occupancy has been raised to 10 people. Um, outdoor patio, there are no restrictions. We can have as many people as we need to have. However, we do need to follow the CDC guidelines of the social distancing and the six feet, and the staff wearing the mask and the gloves and all the sanitation that needs to be done. So phase three coming soon? Phase three, we're hoping by the end of this month, uh, we'll get back to 100% capacity. Um, our catering can get back to 100% capacity and uh, basically normal life. Andy, one last question. Uh, phase three, do I get my steam room back? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we are, we're definitely shooting for that. That is a that's priority. Now that's reopening. That is a El priority. Paso. You okay. got it, sir. Andy, thank you so much. My pleasure. Now you can find out more information on KTSM.com. From a variety of animals to homemade cheese. Licon Dairy is a small farm in San Elisario, just a few minutes east of El Paso. Good morning. How you doing? Owners have been making fresh asadero cheese since the 1950s. He really enjoyed living on, on a farm. Angel Licon's grandfather decided to show others a peek into his life. He had about eight cows and they would make a few packages a day. They'd take them to, uh, you know, they'd sell them door by door. It's an honor, it's a legacy that we have to fulfill and they're big boots that we have to fill. Angel Licon, the third generation to continue the tradition. The cheese is made fresh seven days a week starting at four in the morning. First, the milk is pasteurized, then it is mixed with a special solution until the cheese is separated from the curd. It's heated until it reaches the right consistency Separated into the perfect size, it's flattened with a tortilla press. Ten slices into the bag. We use the same recipe for 60 years. After you visit the grocery store to get yourself some cheese, you can come over and feed the animals at the petting zoo like Roger. <laughs> He's like a giant puppy. He, he doesn't realize that he's uh, as big as he is, so he'll, you know, try and play with you. Donkeys are waiting to get a treat from visitors, while ostriches and peacocks are showing off their feathers. And goats are hoping to get a little extra attention. So we've had people come in from, uh, from Canada. We have people coming in from all over. We had people last year from New Zealand. The Licon family says it's the people who visit who make Licon Dairy what it is. And the restaurant, you know, they'll have dinner and we sit with them and talk with them about um, 
their travels and how different life is from over here from wherever they're from. Reporting in San Elisario for Destination Texas, I'm Susie Castillo. What did I tell you about that cheese? <laughs> this is your show, so if you have an idea of a business you'd like to spotlight or a place in the community that is just a treasure, we are all about positive borderland living. This is Studio 9. You can see everything at KTSM.com. Just click on the Studio 9 tab. I'm Robert Bettis. Thank you for watching Studio 9. Remember, you keep smiling, keep shining borderlands.